Welcome to the Indigo Room. Tonight we are discussing a walk by faith, the lecture by Neville Goddard. So this is a first for me that I don't have my face on the screen. I do need to get a one in the chat to see if you can hear me. Can you hear me? I don't know what's going on um, with, I don't know if it's my camera or if it is StreamYard. My whole screen froze. I was in, um, I was in, a, you know, a chat with technical support and they couldn't figure it out either. So I went over to incognito and incognito web page and my video was working fine and then all of a sudden the screen went to black and it said yeah not today so <laughs> welcome to the indigo room everyone i'm your host sydney chase and this is where we discuss all things spiritual and by that i mean that we are non-physical Spiritual beings having physical human experiences. Life is supposed to be good. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be delicious. And then, and then, and then, sometimes it gets wicky wacky like today. So you will not see my face, which I guess is a good thing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe I have resting ish face today. Maybe spirit said, yeah, we don't want everybody to see that. I don't know. I, I have no idea. But. Um, now you have my voice and we're going to be going over the lecture, Walk by Faith by Neville Goddard. Okay. And I just hope that you all had a delicious day today. Hi, Funke. Hi, Yazgold. Hi, Linda. Hi, Barb. How is everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. And that you slept in the wish fulfilled and you woke up that way and you were feeling fine. I hope you were feeling fine. Um, I was feeling fine till about five minutes to, to about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm still feeling fine. I'm just, you know, a little annoyed. But okay. So I'm still here. And um, you know, I can't, I just I couldn't even send it. Well, I guess I could have sent you all messages that I wasn't going to do the show tonight, but it was already scheduled. So here we are. Today was a really good day for me. Um, I got a lot of work done and uh, you can see the Walk by Faith page you'll be reading from. Good, 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 good. Thank you, Linda. Um, yeah, you can see that. You can't see me though. <laughs> So let's get right into it. First, let's tickle our amygdala. And I don't have to show you how to tickle your amygdala. You already know that. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. And imagine that you have a feather in your hand. And where is your amygdala? One, one, one second. Your amygdala is on either side of your temple. When your amygdala is clicked open, you are in flight or flight fright 
mode. And when your amygdala is clicked closed, no, I'm sorry. I did that backwards. <laughs> when your amygdala, see, I'm all wiki wacky today. When your amygdala is clicked open, you feel good. You feel great. Your frontal lobe is lit up. When your amygdala is clicked closed, you're in flight or fright mode. I'm going to have to just delete this whole front end of this video tonight. So imagine, close your eyes. If you're riding a bicycle, driving a car, walking, or you're at work, Take a moment to just tickle your amygdala. It's a bit of a brain hack. It lights up your frontal lobe. And when you're done, you should be smiling. And I want to see if you will be able to tell if I'm smiling or not just by the sound of my voice. If you can't see me, is she really smiling? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not smiling right now. I'm closing my eyes. So imagine that you have a feather in your hand. And you can feel the quill of your feather. And you can see what your feather looks like, right? You can feel the bristles of it. Is your feather long? Is your feather short? Is it fluffy? Is it thin? Is it stiff? And imagine that color. What color is it? And once you have that visually in your imagination, mine is purple and gold, you're going to take that feather and slide it up into the center of your forehead. And then you're going to slide the feather over to the right and tickle your amygdala on the right. And then slide the feather over to the left and tickle your amygdala on the left and pull your feather out and you're done. So was I smiling or was I not? Oh, that is the question. I was smiling. It, it doesn't, you know, I can't help it. All right. So tonight, tonight, tonight won't be just any night. <laughs> no, it's going to be wicky wacky, Sydney. It won't be just any night. <laughs> we are reading Walk by Faith by Neville Goddard. And I really love this particular lecture. And it does help to explain what he, what Walk by Faith really means. You know, um, a lot of people will tell you that they walk by faith. Sometimes they say it, but they're not really doing it. Blake asked the question, why is it that the Bible is more entertaining and instructive than any other book? Is it not because it is addressed to the imagination, which is spiritual sensation, and only immediately to the understanding or reason? The one book called the Bible is composed of 66 books. Take this challenge. Read each book as though the depth of your soul is speaking to your surface mind, as though the ineffable imagination is speaking to the human imagination and not to your immediate understanding or reasoning mind. Let us examine this thought. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, we walk by faith and not by sight. When we walk by sight, we know our way by objects and that objects that the eyes sees. But Paul tells us to order our life by objects seen only in the imagination. In other words, when you know where you want to go and what you want to be, you are told not to rearrange your physical structure, but to walk by faith, viewing only the rearranged structure of your mind. And if you will remain faithful to that state of consciousness, what is seen only in your imagination will objectify itself in your world. 
Now, I just want to take a moment because I want to just point out, it says to remain faithful right here. You have to remain faithful to that state of consciousness. Now, oftentimes when we are walking by faith, hey, Momo, hi, Susanna. Yeah, you're not, my face ain't here today. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Had technical difficulties. So now you just have my voice. But the, the real important key part right here is, and if you will remain, if, right? If is always a big word. If you will remain faithful, to that state of consciousness, what is seen only in your imagination will objectify itself in your world. It will, but you have to remain faithful to it. It's like you have to, re you know, it's easy, right? We, we have a boyfriend, we have a girlfriend, we have a husband, we have a wife, and we remain faithful to that person. We don't we don't go outside of the relationship. Well, hopefully you don't. <laughs> and, you know, have another relationship with someone else. We have a faithful relationship with that person. So we, as humans, will remain faithful to a person more so than we will remain faithful to our own imagination. Just think about that. We'll remain faithful to that person. We won't cheat. We won't go outside of the relationship. But holy moly, our imagination, child, I ain't got time for that. And then, and then, and then we wonder why those things don't objectify themselves in our world, right? So that's a key point. Just think about that. Are you remaining faithful to your own creation in your imagination. Okay, so let's continue. Paul now adds another observation saying, this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Remember I told you about lot, right? Forgetting what lies behind, I strain forward to what lies ahead. Paul's goal was the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, but you need not have such a goal. Your desire could be a successful business. Now, everything begins in the imagination, for man is all imagination and God is man. God and man differ only in the degree of imagination's intensity. Now keyed low, man walks by sight or by faith in his human imagination. Walking by sight is easier. Of course it is. Everybody does it. It's the easiest thing to do, right? Everybody does it because buildings rarely move. But when you walk by faith, the objects in your mind's eye must remain stable as those of the physical eye. Did y'all catch that? Uh-oh, what happened? Did I lose this? Okay, there it goes. Whew, I was going to say another technical difficulty. But did y'all catch that? That part? It says walking by sight is easier because buildings rarely move. And things, objects rarely move, right? Buildings rarely move unless, you know, there's some sort of tremendous earthquake or we come and knock the building down. But, you know, they put a building up and it could be there for hundreds of years, right? But when you walk by faith, the object in your mind's eye must remain as stable as those of the physical I. And that is where the tricky part comes in. Remember when I told you I was trying to manifest my car 
it took me forever just to stabilize that one little scenario in my imagination. And that is why tickling your amygdala and imagining you have a feather in your hand is such a great exercise for you because it's flexing your imagination muscle. We haven't used it, many of us. Not for that, right? Well, we, you know, we, when we were kids and then, you know, we stopped doing that. So you must ha must get to the point where, you know, your imagination is just as stable as what you see on the outside. So let's go back here. Let me see. Did it go black? No. Okay, I see it. <laughs> My brother, Victor, wanted to be a successful businessman. And he knew how to remain faithful to what he imagined. In 1924, when our family didn't have a cent, Victor rearranged the name on a building in his mind's eye to imply we owned it. Then he did, this he did for two years, when without any more money than when he started imagining. A casual acquaintance purchased the building for us without collateral for $50,000. Eight years ago, we sold the building to a bank for $850,000, and there is no capital gains tax in Barbados. Walking by faith every day as Victor passed that building, he saw J.C. Goddard and Sons on the marquee in place of the existing name of I.N. Roach and Company. Sight told him the building belonged to another, but Faith said the building was his. By simply rearranging the structure of his mind every day for two years, our family's fortune changed. Now we are told faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, so that what so that what is seen was made out of things that do not appear, Hebrews 11. Only my brother Victor saw his mental act. Others saw the sign, J, oh, it's J.N. Roach and Company, by sight, but Victor saw the words J.C. Goddard and Sons by faith. Someone asked Blake, once asked Blake, what he saw when he looked at the sun, and he replied, I see a host of angels singing, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty. We can all see the same tree, but see it differently, just as we can see the same man. One may see him in need, while another sees him gainfully employed, both using the same power. You have the power to either live by faith or by sight. If you live by sight, accepting everything that happens, you remain an automaton, unable to change the conditions and events in your world. Only as you begin to live by faith will your life change. Now, they didn't have cable and TV and all that nonsense like we got today, right? And I was watching something today that was really interesting, and it was... Um, Jake Ducey, and he was talking about who controls the world, right? Who's in power? Who has all the power? Who controls the world? And, you know, we have people talking about the Illuminati and these people and big business and, you know, the cabal and blick a bop de bop de right? Okay. However, I don't know who's pulling the switches, right? But... Our, we've been conditioned, right? We've been programmed all through our lives from when we were little kids all the way up till until we decided that we weren't going to do that anymore. And really, truly, really and truly, it is up to each one of us, right, to break free of your regularly scheduled programming. Just think about that. Now, I didn't get that from him. That just came to my mind just now. <laughs> we, we're sorry to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming or your program, right? 
what? This is your regular programming. Regular program. Regular programming. What does that even mean? Where did that come from? Right? So we are being programmed all day long, every day, by the things we watch, by the thing, the, the content that we um, absorb and put into our thought process. And you, me, all of us, we all have the same power to recondition and reprogram our own subconscious so that we can be, do, and have the things that we want to be, do, and have. It takes practice, right? It takes practice. So just put that in your bonnet. What do you have? And, and, And also, right? You're not, you don't have control of what the programming is, regularly pro, regularly scheduled programming. You don't get to decide what they are going to show you, give to you, feed to you through the media, through all of, you know, all of the content that we have flying up to us all day long. But you do have a choice as to what you choose to put in, right? So pay attention to that. And how are you conditioning and reconditioning your own subconscious? Um, Paul tells us that no matter what he has done or did or did not do, he puts it behind him and stretches forward towards what lies ahead. Paul's ideal was to be called to the highest point of God. I hope this is your ideal too, but perhaps it is not. Maybe other things are pressing upon you, such as the need for money. If so, make that your objective, but use the same technique. Put the past behind you. Do not look back and become like (laughs) Lot's wife, who turned to a pillar of salt, which is a preservative. You always put put what you want to preserve in brine. If you turn back and dwell upon the state you want to leave behind, you have placed it in brine and it will be and it will become it once more. But if you will turn your back upon the past, regardless of what you have or have not done, and stretch forward to what you want to be or do, and remain faithful to your desire, nothing can stop you from achieving it. You will become the man or woman you assume you are if you persist in the assumption that you are already there. So if you would turn your back, turn your back upon the past, what does that even mean? Neville, I thought you said we could revise the past. Sure you can. You can revise the past. However, you don't want to go to the thing. You don't want to keep doing the same things over and over. You don't want to keep reacting the same way over and over because now you're not you're not in that assumption state you're in the old state you're in the old state that you used to live in and how do you know if you're going back to the old state you can check your reactions of how you are responding to the site Because when you're responding to faith, you feel good, right? And you're in your imagination, you're sleeping in the wish fulfilled, and you're feeling delicious. You look, open your eyes, like like, uh, Esau, when he went, I'm sorry, Jacob, when he went to go uh, talk to his father. And his father was, you know, blind and couldn't tell who it was, you're going back to the old state. You're back to the old state. And when you go back to the old state, you act the same way you did before. You took off the new clothes that you just put on because, you know, like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to I'm going to go back over here because it feels comfortable. You can't you, you won't be able to you cannot create the the new thing you want with the old consciousness that you had that created the problem to begin with. 
So you have to become a new man or new woman. How do you do that? You change your concept of self. How do you do that? You act as if you already have it. How do you do that? You assume that it's real. That's how. That's how. Let Blake, like Blake, I have found the Bible most entertaining, challenging, and instructive. It is not an easy book to read. However, if it were, it would not be worth my care. For as the ancients discovered, that which is not too explicit is fittest for instruction, as it rouses the faculties to act. Take the simple statement in Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who reflects the glory of God, God and bears the stamp of his nature. The prophets' instruments through God, the prophets' instruments through which God spoke, recorded their visions of what God intended, saying, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his handiwork, Psalm 18 and 19. But in the last days, God speaks to us by his son, David. This is the fantastic revelation, and for in the end, God is going to reveal himself. I could tell you until the ends of time that you are he, but only David can make you believe it. I'll tell you why. Many people, like Bishop Pike, question the authority of scripture. But it will never be questioned after it is experienced. In the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ is called the word of God. And in the book of John, he declares his word is truth. May I tell you, only when a truth is experienced can it be known. I know what I have experienced is true. You have heard my words and believe me, but you will not know their truth to the degree that I do until they are experienced. I have told you how my mother, my brother walked by faith rather than by sight and created a fabulous business in the islands. Sight told him he didn't have a penny to his name, but in faith, he began to alter his life by that which only his imagination could see. Your sight registers what is before you right now. If you do not like it, you have an eye within that is Christ in you. He's the power of imagination, which through faith can change your life. As the operant power of your imagination, you can tell where you're going and what you're going and what you're doing by watching your thoughts. If certain events in your past are unlovely and you remember them, you are ordering their experience. Can I get a hello? <laughs> if certain events in your past are unlovely and you remember them, you are ordering their experience. You are bringing them back to bear. But if you turn your back on the past by forgetting what lies behind, and stretch forward to what lies ahead, you will order your conversations aright and become what you behold. This truth will never be disproved, but you are its operant power and must live by it. You need nothing on the outside, but can start just where you are, but you must walk in the direction you set up in your imagination. That is why I love the one million dollar spending group, right? Because in there, we're chatting as if it's already done. I have done this before, but not with as many people. And so it's fun to just act as if, right? Talk as if, have conversations as if, it's already done. Stay in the assumption. Keep those conversations on the thing that you want to be, do, and have. I used to go into work. It's so funny. And they and they used to laugh at me too. But I don't care. You know, like I don't care when people laugh at me. I said, oh my goodness, we had such a great day today. They were like, what? Because the day just started. We just got there. This was not at Amazon, however. 
Did we just have, we had an awesome day. It was great. And it took a minute, but bit by bit, they all started to turn around and, and act like that too. It took a while. When I say not, not that day, it took like several weeks, right? Before one person said, yep, we had an excellent day today when I came in. It was like, good morning, Sydney. We had a great day. Wasn't it fabulous? I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> so when you start to have conversations, right? That's why I love this group that we have together. When you have certain, com- start having conversations and talking as if now you're not just talking to yourself. You're not just in the wish fulfilled by yourself. You're having these real life conversations as if it's already done. You start behaving differently. You start acting differently. Your body starts to move differently. Your conversations start to change. And inevitably, what would happen is we actually started having better days at work. They didn't get it. They just thought it was funny at first, right? I don't know if anybody ever actually noticed. I did because I knew what I was doing at the time. So ask yourself, what would it be like if it were true that I am now the person I want to be? Then reach for its feeling, its spiritual sensation. What is that? I'll show you in a very simple way. Feel a piece of glass. Now feel a baseball. Does the baseball feel like glass? Can you feel a tennis ball? Does it feel like a baseball or a piece of glass? Can you feel a piece of cloth, cloth, a violet, a piano? Do they all feel alike? Of course not. That's spiritual sensation a vivid way of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling reality. When you start to catch yourself more often than not of assuming it real and acting as if throughout your day, I'm telling you, all of, when you just ask, ask yourself, when you catch yourself reacting the same way you used to, right? When you catch yourself reacting those old habits, just moving differently or flinching differently, right? Or getting a little, catch those moments and say, oh, wait a minute, right? Move back into the state of, oh yeah, it's already done. I already have that. And your whole, even if you do it for, even if you catch that feeling for a minute, it's powerful because it reminds you, yep, It's done. It's coming. It's coming. And yes, you can move in and out of states. You can move in and out of, you know, in in a good feeling state and then back into wiki wacky. But every time you pull yourself back, you are flexing that whole muscle. And your body starts to change and and you stop reacting the same way that you used to. Your subconscious is going, wait a minute, something... (laughs) Something's different here. We're not, we're not, we're not acting that way anymore. A few years ago, I gave a similar lecture in New York City, and a lady in my audience decided to test me. While sitting in her chair, she embraced a large bunch of roses. She smelled them, felt their velvety petals, and saw their beauty in her mind's eye. Then, breaking the silence, she left my meeting and returned to her hotel at the Waldorf Astoria. Very fancy schmancy hotel. It's not around anymore, but anyway. (laughs) The next day, the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth, was given a party at the Waldorf Astoria with 2,000 people in attendance. After the reception, the maitre d', not wanting to discard the flowers there, instructed his men to take three dozen roses up to this lady's room. And when she came home that evening, all she could smell were those lovely roses. She had embraced and lost herself in the feeling 
of the possession of beautiful roses. She walked by faith and not by sight, and the next day her room was filled with the heavenly aroma of roses. Now, remember when we were listening, when we first started the 30-day series, right? And we were listening to Greg Braden talking about the book of Thomas and those lost, the lost chapters, the lost book of Thomas. And there's a section in there and it says, be enveloped, right? Be enveloped by your desire. So you have to get like the feeling you're possessed by it, basically. It's like when I talk about when I went, you know, to get the surgery, right? I told y'all I could not have anybody telling me that that was not going to happen. I was so enveloped in that it was already done that you could have stood in front of me and screamed at, at me like that nurse did every day and tell me, no, ma'am, that's not going to happen. And I'm like, yes, it is. Period. Point blank. You can't, you can't, there's nothing you can do to make me not believe that this is true. That's how you have to, that's how, when you get that way, you know, the world's your oyster. Now, perhaps because of its memory, you find yourself continuing to look back at what you were and are and not ahead into what you want to be. If you will order your conversations aright, right now, their truth will happen in the simplest way. A seamstress and dress designer I know wanted more money. Using her imagination, she held an envelope in her hand and listened to the paper tear as she opened it. Shaking the contents out, she counted the money to the very penny. This she did for seven nights. On the eighth day, a lady called, offering her a job, which paid her to the penny what she had imagined. Do you know that lady could have counted out much more and she would have received it, but she was quite satisfied with the amount she had imagined. Now, if there is evidence of a thing, does it matter what the world thinks? Not to me, it don't. Could you ever take this lady's experience from her? Nope. The truth experienced by her parallel scripture for all things are possible to one who believes. How did this lady believe what she was imagining? She did it by bringing forth all of her senses to bear upon this event, using her sense of hearing. She heard the paper tear, shaking the contents of the envelope, she heard the money fall on the table. She felt the envelope and saw the bills inside. Do you know money has an odor unlike anything else? That's why I told y'all I had to go get some, some money out the bank just so that I can remember what it feels like and what it smells like because we're all using debit cards and credit cards, right? I needed to feel the money so I could really get it in there. I really needed to feel it and look at it, smell that sucker. All those $50 bills. So you can smell money. She determined what she would do if she had the money and she did it. Have you ever smelled money? Have you ever smelled money? I know. I have. I have smelled it. <laughs> and it's 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 got a quite an interesting scent, right? Uh-oh, what's going on? Did I lose the, the page again? No, there we go. It has quite an interesting, quite an interesting scent and in what it smells like, right? Yes, Linda says, I have funk hay. Yes, I have. Yes. So I would encourage y'all, if that's what you're doing, you know, I don't know what you are creating right? It's none of my business. <laughs> but I would encourage you to pick up some money of your own and just have it around, right? Really touch it. Really get the feel of it. Smell it. Like really examine it, right? I often bless my money. I bless my debit cards too. 
I, I sage them and I bless them. I bless my money, right? Because money is an energy and we're all passing it back and forth to each other, right? I pray over it. I pray to the, I pray that the next person that receives it, that it brings them joy, life, health, what, you know, whatever it is that they needed with that particular bill. But I send love out when I'm spending my money. It's hard to remember to do that when we don't have like a tangible thing to hold on to. But I, I, I try to remember, you know, when I'm spending money, like, you know, online and using my debit card or, you know, I try to bless the money, the exchange, because it's just energy, right? That's all it is. Uh, Barb said, I smelled, I smelled the money in my wallet today at the store. Weird. I don't know. Why is that weird? I just said, I love the smell of money. Money smells good to me. <laughs> I love money and money loves me. Okay. So let's get back to the reading here. And let's see. Another lady um, went to Stern's department store in New York City. Stern's is close to. <laughs> Saying to herself, Neville says, I can have anything I want if I will imagine and believe in my imaginal act. Having no money, this lady walked over to the hat department, took off her hat, and tried on a new one. Walking around the area, she admired herself in front of all the mirrors. But when she returned, her hat was gone. When she described it to the sales lady, she learned that her hat had been sold. <laughs> The section manager was called in and he told her to take any hat she wanted. Compliments of Stern. She liked the one that she had been wearing, so she left the store with her new hat in hand and she hadn't paid a dime for it. Here is another story of a similar nature. This lady's profession was that of being a lady of the evening. She attended all of my meetings and one day she said to me, you know, Neville, the strangest thing happened. You told me that I could have anything I wanted if I simply imagined it. One day I saw a beautiful hat in the window of a department store on Broadway. It was $18, but I loved it. So I imagined wearing the hat, you know, and as I walked up the street, I kept looking at my reflection in the shop windows, seeing that hat on my head. Arriving home, I imagine placing the new hat in the closet instead of my old one. Every day for the next week or 10 days, as I put on my old hat, I imagined it was the new one. Then one day, a friend called and asked me to come see her. And while there, she brought out a hat box and said, I must have been insane when I bought this hat. I wouldn't wear it to a dog fight. Yet strangely enough, I feel it would look lovely on you. She opened the box and brought out not a hat. But the hat, the very hat I had seen in the window and worn in my imagination. Then she asked, Neville, why didn't God give me the money to buy the hat myself instead of giving it to me in this manner? Knowing her profession, I said, Anne, do you owe any rent? And she replied, yeah, two weeks. What do you pay about? seventeen fifty per week? Child, let me just let me let me just say this for a hot, hot second. But I, I've decided I'm going to pay seventeen fifty a week for my rent. All right, I'm just let me just put that out there. You know, <laughs> excuse me. Yes. So you owe thirty five dollars. <throat> yes. What price? What price hats do you usually buy? Well, the three or four dollar ones. Have you ever? Bought a hat. Seven, have you ever bought a $17 hat? Never. Then tell me honestly. If you, if when you were looking at the hat, you had seen a $100 bill on the ground, would you have brought the hat? She said no. Then I said, so no matter how much money God might have given you, you still would not have bought the hat. So someone else had to buy it for you, and they did. That's true, right? 
oftentimes we look at items, we look at things and we say, or whatever, places that we want to go, things we want to be, do and have. And we go, oh yeah, I would love to have that. Oh, that would be so great. That would be so wonderful. And you imagine it for a fleeting time. You, you, we don't do the work like she did. She imagined that hat over and over and over. But here's the thing. If you found the $100 bills, you wouldn't buy that hat. You wouldn't buy that item. You wouldn't buy that thing. You would spend it on something else. So sometimes spirit knows better. Well, not sometimes. Why do I keep saying sometimes? All the time. Spirit always knows better. Always, always, always. I have bought clothes, brought them home. And wondered what possessed me to buy them. I did it because someone was treading in the wine press elsewhere. Someone imagined a suit of clothes. So I went to my tailor, chose the cloth, and paid for the suit. But when I brought it home, my wife wouldn't let me bring it into the house. Then a friend who wanted something just like it contacted me and got the suit. He was treading the wine press while I paid for the suit. So somebody in who knows where, West your blip, was imagining that very suit that never was going to get made. And he don't know what possessed him, right? How often have we said, I don't know what possessed me to buy this, you know, but do you want it? And somebody says, oh my God, that's exactly what I wanted. Blah, blah, blah. It's so great. What? You were moved by them. <laughs> Believe me, imagination is spiritual sensation. It is a vivid sight, a vivid sound. When Beethoven went deaf, all sound to the outer ear came to its end. Then Beethoven began to hear with the inner ear and wrote all of the beautiful music we so enjoy. You can now think of someone you love and hear him speak. If you can't hear him, use one of your other spiritual senses. A touch, a sound, a sight, or an odor will do. I know in New York City years ago, as I walked through Harlem, I smelled the odor of cooking that instantly took me to Barbados. Although I was physically in, a, in Harlem, my sense of smell told me I was 2,000 miles away in Barbados. You can remember a sound, a touch, a sight, and put yourself any place. Like Paul, learn to walk by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Forget what lies behind and stretch forward to what lies ahead. In the third chapter of Philippians, Philippians, Paul names his desire as the calling of God in Christ Jesus. But it need not be yours. It doesn't have to be yours. Okay? I urge you. Hold on, I gotta take a sip of water. <laughs> I urge you to try this. I urge you to try this for your life is forever. Nothing dies. The little rose that blooms once blooms forever, for nothing passes away. If a loved one ceases to be in this little sphere, he doesn't die, but is instantly restored to life to carry on his wonderful journey. That is true. Just so you know, um, you're talking to somebody that had that experience. Literally. He is instantly restored to life to carry on his wonderful journey in this age until that moment in time when God speaks to him through his son, who calls him father. Only then will he know he is the author of his own world. Then his journey will be over. And when he takes off his little garment, it will be for the last time. Paul tells us in Philippians, I desire to depart and be with Christ. For, this, for that is better by far. But it is more necessary that I remain in the flesh on your account. Paul longed to depart and be one with God the Father, but he knew it was necessary for him to remain in the flesh and continue his instruction, just as I do. Take my words to heart and achieve your every desire. Learn to walk by faith and not by sight. And like Paul, turn your back upon everything you have ever accomplished 
and go forward by faith towards the goal you have set for yourself. Knowing what you would see if your goal were reached, how would you feel if you were there? What would you do now if it were true? Walk in that state and you will achieve it. Now let us go into the silence. Okay. So Barb said, I smell, um, I felt my credit cards in the car and had some cash. So I was counting it and, and sniffed it. <laughs> well, good for you. Ain't nothing wrong with sniffing money. I'd rather get, I'd rather sniff money than sniff some other stuff up my nose, which I can't do because, you know, I can't put stuff up my nose. It's just, I can't do it. I can't even put Tristan up my nose. I had the hardest time with those swabs, you know, the, um, the, um, COVID swabs. <laughs> Stress me the heck out. Um, Funke, that was a great read. Yes. I, I felt like we needed to just go over that again. Right. You know, we've been, um, we've been doing and reading Neville since 2009. So I'm going to do my best to get back to reading, you know, some Neville stuff here on the show. And maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do that every Sunday instead of, you know, um, the typical Indigo Room show. We'll do one of Neville's or somebody will do some reading. And um, then I don't have to show my face. I just read. <laughs> Anyway, how are you all doing? Did you have a good day? I'm going to end the show, but do you have any questions? Do you, how do you feel about this reading right now? Is it something that you can put in your put in your bonnet and really absorb and really allow yourself to remain faithful, right? I know that's kind of hard sometimes, but re think about, just think about, you know, the person that you might be dating or, you know, you want them to be faithful to you, right? He wasn't faithful. She wasn't faithful. Everybody's running around talking about who's, who shot John, who did this, who did that, bah, 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 right? Remain faithful to your own imagination, to your own desires. I love that part, right? That was so important to hear, I feel, to reiterate, remain faithful to that. Walk by your faith and not by sight. Linda said, I had a delightful day. All right now. I loved it. I needed to hear it again. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. You know, re repetition, repetition is really important. I feel Susanna. I had a good day. Funky. Today was a very good day. Yay. Where's Momo? Momo, where are you, Momo? <laughs> and Yaz, Yaz Gold, did you guys have a good day too? Um, there is one thing that I experienced last night um, I'm going to share. And this is when you really know that you're starting, things, things are starting to show up for you, right? It's called Driftwood. And we're going to talk about Driftwood on the next episode of the Indigo Room. But Driftwood started showing up for me last night. And I am just thrilled. These are just small things, seemingly. Like, to anybody else, it wouldn't even, it would, it would just pass them, it, it would just pass them by. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't even pay attention to it, right? But I caught every single one of those things. It was four different things that showed up for me all in the same night. Four different pieces of driftwood. I am staying in the wish fulfilled. I am staying in my imagination and feeling it real. I'm, I, 
acting as if I'm staying there because I know that I know. You all know that I told you I had the click, right? I was feeling good. I know that I know. And so I'm staying. I'm staying in there. You can't tell me anything. I have four pieces of driftwood show up. Four. Not one, not two, not three, four. <laughs> Yaz Gold. I had a blessed day and I enjoyed the reading. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed the reading. Momo. I'm here. Had a restful day, which I needed. Oh, more of good. I'm glad. That's wonderful. And wonderful day. First walk on the beach in a long time. It was splendid. Yes. Nice, Barb. He got out the house, got outside, got away from the jobs and just enjoyed the outsideness, right? Isn't that delicious? Um, well, I want to thank you all for joining me here tonight. And I also want to share, um, <laughs> if you're new to the channel, I really do appreciate you stopping by. You can check out the video, the last video that we did here on the Indigo Room, which was the end of our app series, and that'll pop up on the screen. So click the next video if you haven't, if this is your first time here, click the next video that pops up on the screen and like comment, subscribe. What did you think about the reading tonight? How are you walking by faith or are you walking by sight? Are you having a little bit of a challenge staying in the wish fulfilled? If you are, we have a new coaching group that opens up, assume it is real, acting as if it's already done, praise and thanksgiving. You can click the link below and check out if that's something that you would like a little bit of help with. We have a new group coming up in March and April. So click the link. It's in the description below. Check that out. It's on our website at theindigoroom.org. But remember, remember who you are. Remember that you are source energy right here in a physical body. Remember that you can be, do, and have anything, you just read it, anything that you desire. And remember, it's not being extraordinary that makes you unique. It's your uniqueness that makes you extraordinary. And if you want to learn how to do those three steps, click the next video that shows up. You are marvelous and there's nobody in the planet, in the, on the planet, in the world, in the universe, just like you. Have a great night. I love you all. And I will see you, hopefully, <laughs> in the next video. Have a great night. Bye.